Hello, people. I'm Javi Kawai, joined by Achara Kirk. What's up? And we are talking about RRR. This is our spoiler review. So uh, we're doing a three camera setup. So it's an effort to keep you guys engaged, to, to make it less boring, basically. Because I know mm -hmm. that after a while, just watching two people talk with the same angle for a while can get boring. So this is an effort to shake things up. Hopefully, you guys enjoy it. I will be looking at each other more. Yes. than the camera, but uh, we'll look at the camera. It'll the be an epic setup for an, for an epic, epic review of an epic yeah. movie. So I got a bunch of uh, bullet points here that I wanted to cover for the spoiler review. If you haven't seen our non-spoiler yet, you should definitely check it out because this is basically going to be picking up where that one left off in an effort to just, exp it's just going to be expanding on that basically. Sure. Uh, so the first thing I want to talk about is just S.S. Rajamouli's vision in this mm -hmm. movie because I mean, he was spearheading this thing, and it took him three years to complete this film. Was it three I, or five? I don't remember exactly. It's been. It was more than one. It was a long time. <laughs> it was a long I mean, time, he he, did, yeah. he dedicated a lot of himself to get this movie done, and I think that at the end, he definitely had something to be proud of here because it, what he did was brought to life what felt like you know Indian history through the style of anime I guess if, if that's yeah or like it. a mean, superhero movie yeah I mean we we talked about that almost ad nauseum in the in the non-spoiler review but I, I really want to just commend him for what he did here because there's a lot of over-the-top films that we have seen from India over-the-top films we've seen in general but over-the-top films I just want to keep it limited to Indian cinema right mm -hmm. there's a lot of over-the-top films we've seen from India and not all of them have resonated with me like this one has yeah this one had something different about it and I'm not quite sure yet what that is it just coalesced into a film that felt right is the easiest way to put it yeah I don't, I don't know if it's like it had a lot of heart or like you you really felt everything that they were kind of putting forth and it wasn't i mean yes the the action was very stylized it was very over the top it was like anime you know just so creative and like how crazy can we do this like how cool can we make it yeah. and everybody stepped up to the challenge and and really delivered here but at the same time I think that it was backed up by a lot of emotion and, and really good acting too. So, But everything was done in it. such a way that felt, even though it was over the top, the emotions felt grounded. Yes. Does that yes. make sense? Yes, like, absolutely. Yeah. I liked this so much more than Bahubali, both parts. I do too, actually. Yeah. You could feel how much effort went into this. Yeah. I, I feel like, because from the, the, the camera choices to the choreography, to the action and the set pieces and whatnot. I mean, it, it it's a spectacle of a movie, but I, I felt like it was very measured in its execution. Even though it got so big, it still felt measured, if that makes any sense. Like there was, there was I could tell there was painstaking efforts to get things right. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, every single shot was beautiful. Like there is no doubt that aesthetically this is very pleasing. Yeah. And like you said, a lot of thought was put into every single aspect of that from, you know, the costumes, the lighting, the framing, the set design, everything. Yeah. You know, they did a really great job and they just really drew us in. And then, you know, I think a lot of it was also just the really great acting from Ram Charan and Junior NTR yeah. being the two main characters and the amazing chemistry that they had. Yeah, I think that there was only a couple of moments that really bugged me in the movie. And the one that sticks out in particular was when um, Rama finds out how to get into NTR's inner circle basically because mm -hmm. you know his whole thing is rooting out the guy who's supposed to assassinate somebody right right and like the the connection he makes is so quick it felt like super easy barely an inconvenience like he just has to go uh we, we should just kill the guy ntr's brother comes and finds him and goes hey can you join our club <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> oh yeah like 10 seconds into his yeah, adventure yeah, yeah. <laughs> like already thankfully they didn't continue on that path like yeah. thankfully like he f he realized he was a cop which i thought was a really cool moment but uh, that would be like the only moment in the movie where I was like, that felt a little too simple. It felt a little too quick. Uh, I, have I thought some... there was another super easy moment that you you spoke with me what? about in the car. Which was what? Like how quickly they killed the big bad white bad guy. 
Yeah, I, I wouldn't call that a super easy moment. I would say that was an underwhelming moment for me. Okay. Because they set up the bad guy in an interesting way near the end of the film. The bad guy, uh, his name is Scott. Scott. He f jumps out of the car, the car bounces, and he's up in the air, and the gun is up in the air. Yeah. And he grabs it like a, like, like a super villain and shoots. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so this guy's a badass. But then yeah. at the very end, you don't have an epic badass fight between our two main dudes and Scott, which is what should have happened. He was taken down just as easily as one of the soldiers. That sucked to me. It's like, I guess it was fine because you had this huge explosion through the entire grounds, through the, like the whole thing blew up. Yeah. And so he was kind of messed up. He just saw his wife died. I would have thought that seeing, you know, Lady Scott dead, he would have been enraged even more, you know, right. you Indians. Yeah, yeah. And like, I, I, I would have thought there would have been an epic battle between them, but maybe they blew their wad and spent all their money by that point. And it's like, okay, we'll just put an arrow on him. <laughs> You know, put just, a bullet in him. Just put a bullet in yeah. him. Yeah. You know, give it back to him. The, yeah. The, you know, the expensive bullets. Very, very poetic, actually. I thought that... Every, everything came full circle. Yeah, yeah, everything in the movie came back. And so nothing was superfluous. Even the stuff that you thought was just throwaway, like them riding on the motorcycle and the horse at the same yeah. time, that came back. Well, one of my favorite things that came back was when... Um, they were all having lunch or dinner or something. They were having a meal at uh, Beams or Akhtar's fake family's home. Yeah, yeah. And then he was like so hungry or whatever, he was eating with his left hand. And yeah. then the woman who was pretending to be his mom or something was like, oh, don't do that. Yeah. And then he was like, Oh, it, I'm hungry. It just makes it just makes me eat the food faster, or something like that, right? And then, come to find out, way later on in the movie, there's this flashback of Rama and his family, and he's got a little brother who did the exact same thing and, yeah. and basically had the same dialogue. And it was like, oh, and then you know exactly. You're like, that's why he reminds him of his brother, and, and right. it just kind of makes the relationship bond even stronger. And yeah. oh my god, so good. Uh, I guess my, uh, one other thing that kind of fell to the wayside that I wish was handled with a little, little bit more finesse was the stuff with the English lady. Um, I forgot her name. Jenny. Oh, Jenny. Yeah, because she comes in strong in the film, and it's like this is focus on her and the and the relationship there. And then it just kind of goes away and comes back to serve the plot. Like, okay, here are the plans to the building. She just yeah. betrays the English people. I mean, we set up that she's got an issue with the way that the Englishmen handle the Indians. And she does not like that. But for her to just go full-blown, turn her back 180 on the English, like, on her people, and go, here are the plans so you can blow this shit up. Like, that you know that just felt a little bit too far fetched for me. It was a little bit convenient. Yeah, no, and also right at the end when basically I'm I'm not sure what her relation was to Scott. I think he was maybe her uncle or whatever. Yeah, but like she didn't give two Rama and Beam either. just like killed her uncle and yeah. her aunt, and then she's hugging Beam. And I'm like. Okay, I get it. Like, they were super deplorable people, especially right. the sadist auntie. But, like, you're going to hug the murderers of your family? Yeah. I guess. I don't know. Every, it was it was a little bit... Everything with her started to fall apart at a certain point. Like, yeah. even during the epic action sequence when uh, Ram found out about... Uh, I forget everybody's name in this movie. Uh, Beam found out about Rama. Mm -hmm. Like, because he, he realized, oh, he's a soldier. Yeah. Right? Right before that... Beam put Jenny inside of a car. For what? Like, he just <laughs> stuck her in a her car. To keep her safe from the animals. Uh, keep her, really? Yes. Come on. Yes. <laughs> like, they got a tiger. They, they got don't a, know they, how to open doors. <laughs> you haven't seen YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> the animals know how to open doors. They do now. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Back I, in those days. I, I just wasn't sure what was happening because the whole thing was burning down. I know. It was like, and stay you just here. stuck her in a car. So <laughs> hopefully the car doesn't blow up yeah, and exactly. you'll be safe from the, the tigers and stuff. What would you say is the theme of this movie? What is the overarching theme? The overarching theme for me was friendship mm -hmm. and brotherhood and also coming together as a people and empowering your people to fight for themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. What do you That's think it was? Theme. I don't know. I'm still figuring it out. I don't know if it was loyalty. I don't know if it was like learning your path, learning that destiny isn't exactly what you 
sought out to do at the get-go necessarily? Yeah, those are, those are all, I mean, yeah. I guess those are all themes. What is the overarching you know, theme? You know, sometimes, okay, sometimes when, you know, that you read uh, in screenwriting books, like the, yes. the thing that puts you on the path to write that story isn't necessarily the story you end up writing. Like w the reason why you wrote it isn't necessarily what you end up writing later on. Like cause things evolve, right? Okay. And so here, Rama's journey evolves because what he set out to do was get, gather as many weapons as possible. Like that was his mission and he stuck to it so loyally, right? But then he realized like what put him on this mission isn't necessarily as important any, anymore as this thing that's right in front of him, which is his friend who's about to die. Yeah, and not only that, but he came to the realization that actually while he was on this mission to grab weapons, to, to, to steal weapons in order to bring them back to his village so he could arm them yeah. so that they could fight, here was a man who- Who's oh my passion. God, who was passionate and who yeah. sang a beautiful song and moved a crowd so fiercely that they gained the courage to fight against the British using whatever means necessary. Like you yeah. saw people biting people, scratching people, yeah. like climbing over the barbed wire and everything. And the song was beautiful. That was such a like amazing moment in the, in the story. And he, he realized like, oh, if I save this one guy, yeah. he can, inspire people to become their own weapons. So I guess right. maybe it's a story about finding strength. your own agency okay. and your own strength, finding the strength to, to change your destiny. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, that works. Uh, it's funny you mentioned that, that, Why? that scene. That That's what I call the brave heart scene because it was like the William Wallace torture scene, yes. right? And that's what uh, encouraged, I mean, according to Braveheart, that's what encouraged the Scots to rise up against the English. Yeah. English are always the bad guys. <laughs> I mean, we did a lot of we did a lot of shitty things, you yeah. know? <laughs> that scene, while I admit is beautiful, uh -oh. was, I was like, I. I kind of just wanted to see him get tortured, and I wanted that to be what enraged the people to rise up. Not necessarily him singing, because it's like, okay, there's this scene, I remember my dad was showing me, oh, what was it called? Glory. There's a scene where Denzel Washington is getting whipped just because he wanted shoes, mm -hmm. right? And Denzel's been whipped so many times that while he's being whipped right now, uh, he's looking at, um, I forgot the name of the guy, but he's looking at the dude who was supposed to help him out. Mm -hmm. And he, instead of crying out, this just one little tear just comes down his face. And my dad's like, you know, that's some powerful cinema, but wildly unrealistic, he'd be <laughs> crying out. And so in this scene, I, I, I kind of wanted it to just be more like Braveheart, I guess, and the people to just like, but he's still maintaining his thing stubbornly, like I'm not gonna let my knees fall. Yeah. But then it turned into this whole song and I was like, I guess. I just no, sort of I let liked, it happen. I liked the song. I know you like the song. So you just much, got done though. telling me how much you like the song, Shara. Let me say my part. Okay. So what I'm saying is I just it was one of those things where I wanted all the music to be cut out and you just see the torture and the torture amping up and him not giving in. Him 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 not allowing the English to beat him down. Even when his friend is trying to push his knee to the ground, he's like, no, I am still gonna stand my ground here until I completely pass out. And that's when the people rise up. Because I think you still get the same effect, at least for me. It's like it's even more painful. That's the, I think that's what it was, is the pain for me was taken away. Like I remember when the whip came out with the barbed wire yeah, in it. Yeah. At a certain point, I'm just watching a music video. I think that's this is maybe my dumb American brain or my ignorant American brain, I should say. Like at a certain point, I just felt like I was watching a song because he's singing through all the pain. I'm like, I'm not feeling any of his pain now. I, it's like I see blood and I see some pretty hideous things happening, but I don't feel hurt watching it. I just feel the passion of his song. Sure. I guess, let me try and convince you. <laughs> Because <laughs> the thing is, I'm also supposed to be feeling pain vicariously through Rama because he's having to do this to this guy that he loves, his yeah, friend. Yeah, his best friend. I, I, that's all like taken away. For me, that's all taken away because I'm focused on this song. That's what I'm trying to say. Well, I think what what's um, really great about the song is this idea of, you know, kind of working through your pain or realizing that there is this almost like a higher power. There's something else that's bigger than you. And for him, because he's a tribal, it was about, you know, the earth, the earth that nurtured him, you know? Yeah, and yeah. then he's he's talking about- None of that's lost on me. All of that beautiful imagery yeah. about, you know, the blood being like all of these positive aspects. 
um, about the earth and all of that, and and it's like very much a part of his identity and his culture, and it's also the earth is India, right? And sure. so it's you know it's it's. Uh, then you know what I would have liked. I, w- I would have liked it if it was a, a rousing song without the instrumentation, and all the people joined in. No, oh, they just they just sang the English away. No, but they joined in on the song that he was singing, oh, okay. and then that's what would then, also led they... to the uprising. Something like that would have been epic. Uh, just to allow me to still feel what was happening in the scene, because as soon as you put instrument instrumental music over it, the, I'm taken out of the torch. Like if you look at that Braveheart scene, just because mm-hmm. it's the easiest comparison. There's no music until he's gonna die. Right. That's when the music finally kicks in, when is when he screams, uh, freedom. Freedom! Yeah, and then and then he dies, yeah. and then music kicks in, and that's very sad. Yeah. That was the only time you heard music, right? <laughs> Whereas there was music through this whole thing, and I'm like, ah. I, so I wanna feel I wanna feel bad for him, I, but I couldn't, because it's like, I, I was reminded yet again how invincible he is, how invincible Rama is, how invincible everybody is in this movie that's a legend. Like, That's I, why they're superheroes. Yeah, yes, exactly. They're, but it's the easiest way to put it is they're like legendary stat- heroes. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, 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 they're superheroes. They're, it's well, a superhero movie. Whether you're on the protagonist or the antagonist side, if you're a hero, then you are equipped with more plot armor you're equipped with more <laughs> armor in general you're sure. able to do things that are like make you way more invincible to bullets and and, and snake bites and everything yes <laughs> the snake bite thing was another thing so like <laughs> ntr jr literally says to him it's gonna take you all night to heal from this yeah 10 minutes goes by and he's on the battlefield again full strength fully like Somehow he managed to get his uniform on and everything and ride in in the most epic way possible. Yeah, the, on the chariot. The, the chariot, the burning. Fu- the burning chariot, exactly. I'm like. So cool. <laughs> you said just five minutes ago this was going to take all night long. Yeah. And then he's yeah. like, no, dude, no, dude, I've got to take you down. My mission is bigger than this. My mission is bigger than our friendship. Let's, yeah. um, I'm, I'm coming at you. The story was slightly predictable, but I enjoyed it anyway. It was following certain beats that I'm familiar with because like you had this guy who was supposed to, you know, infiltrate. Mm-hmm. Um, and I knew that the person who was trying to infiltrate the Indian group was trying to infiltrate the English. Like from the very beginning, it seemed like, cause the, the, the opening was crazy, right? You saw this this young lady get taken away from her mom. Oh, which yeah, was that was heartbreaking. Heartbreaking scene, right? Yeah. Which was, is supposed to harken back to like the actual history that's, I don't know if that actually happened, but it sounds like something that could it happen. It sounds definitely plausible. Then you follow that up with the scene with Rama where he's trying to take down that one guy who he was ordered to go after. Yeah. In the most epic way possible, which really, really sets the tone for the movie. It's like right there, you know, this is an over the top film. It's going to do some crazy over the top stuff. It did what it needed to do for me because it showed me the level of action we're going to experience, the level of violence, the kind of dude that this person is, how dedicated he is. How determined. Yeah. Yeah. But also the question is like, wait, but you're Indian. Why? Why are you? Why are you going after that guy? And then, yeah, then we find out why. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. At a certain point, I knew that you know the bill was going to come <laughs> due. Okay. Which is, at some point, you know, uh, a Ram, uh, not Ram, um, Beam was going to find out about Rama mm-hmm. and him being a soldier. I didn't know it was going to happen in the way that it did, where he was just going to reveal himself that way. Right. I thought he was going to find out, and it was going to be like, what? No! <laughs> you know, like... Well, there were definitely some moments where they set that up, like, with the, the sketch of his his friend and his team. Yeah. And then, like, he's all like, oh, yeah, why don't you show me that picture? And then, oh, lo and behold, the picture falls out of his hand and gets dirty or something, and then they get distracted. I thought that was and cool. They, I, I like that. I like that. I like that he was trying to show it to him. Yeah. I thought he was going to crash the bike or yeah, something. Me too. I was literally like, dude, like, just act cool, okay? Yeah. Like, don't crash the bike right now. And yeah. then it, it didn't happen. So, like, yeah, there were definitely moments where you felt the suspense of, like, oh, shit, is this the moment where he's going to find out that yeah. his best friend is, like, not who he says he is? I thought this movie was going to take a huge risk and go a completely different direction because that was part of what I would call the broke back montage. <laughs> like, I thought first, like, I'm like, there's no way they're going to go this direction, right? Because for, for just a hair of a moment, I was like, is this about them falling in love with each other? Yeah, we like, and we had to have the, the conversation in the in the middle of that whole sequence because you were like, wait, is this, is this a bro? Are they like into each other? Because look at the way they're looking at each there other. There was one like, scene where where <laughs> Beam Beam was sitting on um on a, a ledge, 
No, it, it was it was Rama sitting on the ledge, and then Beam put his arm in between Rama's legs. He didn't just put his hand between his legs. He put his palm right by his crotch. <laughs> and I'm like. Maybe it was the stacking of the camera. Maybe it was Maybe the stacking of the camera. Maybe it just looked really close to yeah. his crotch area. Yeah. I could see I, why you thought that. If this went that direction, I wouldn't have been mad. <laughs> They're both attractive individuals. Like, I, I would have been fine with it. Truth be told, I know a lot of people would have been livid. Yeah. <laughs> but I would have been cool with it. It's like, yeah, I can see why that would happen. I mean, yeah. But anyway. If you're uh, like, I would. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> <laughs> but, but but also I think it might be something to do more so with culture comfort, yeah and and like yeah the comfort that male friends have with each other right. maybe in India so but look looking back on this the story was quite simple like yes, it was. It, it, and, I, and I didn't mind that I think that actually worked in the movie's favor because you had one guy who was trying to infiltrate you know the other side the other guy who's trying to infiltrate the other side mm -hmm. and then you realize they're on the same side. Yeah. And the the flashbacks they did here was, I, I want to commend SS Rajamuli for not repeating history here because the last time he did a flashback, that was the rest of the movie. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know? Yeah, we were like, wait, what happened? Then he had a sequel where half the movie was a flashback again. I'm yeah. like, dude, like, who am I following here? <laughs> you know, I didn't, I personally had issues with that. Whereas I felt like the flashbacks were very tastefully done here. Very much it, so, it, it, yeah. It was done enough to give you the backstory to, to, make you understand where these characters are coming from and what gives them the passion for what they're doing and i'm like yeah that makes a lot of sense yeah i thought rama's backstory the flashback was so good and With ajay devgan yeah. did such a good job yeah. playing his dad like it was just incredibly moving all of that stuff and i, I liked the way that ss rajamuli kind of spooned it out to us in like little mouthfuls so like you know in the beginning in the first one you just see him like holding someone's hand and he's miss and, and it's missing a finger or something and then you see kind of glimpses from the whole scene and then uh, as an audience member you're kind of trying to put it together in a way that makes sense but you're not really sure and then when you see how it all plays out yeah. you're just like Oh my God, yeah. okay, I understand why you're like well, this well, now. It was done in such a way that made you ask questions. Yeah. And I, I thought that it was very clever because it misled you. Yes. Because you're like, oh, but... Why it, did he kill his dad? Yeah, it yeah. makes a lot of sense the way that it misleads you though because it's not done in such a way that feels mischievous. It doesn't feel like, ha, tricked you. Because right. like sometimes movies do that where it feels like it tricked you, but it, this didn't feel like that. It felt like... He, we were seeing glimpses of his trauma. Yeah. And it was being shown to us in such a way that is acceptable. Because <laughs> when you get down to the later part of the film and you see all the pieces come together, you're like, oh, oh, all of these. But he's still going to be affected by this thing that we saw earlier in the movie. So that makes that makes a lot of sense why he would focus on that in the moment. And that's, right. what, and that's what's revealed to us. Yeah. Him shooting his dad is obviously gonna have, it's gonna take its toll on his soul, you know? Yeah. So that's the part that's gonna stick with him, not the part where he, his dad blew up yeah. and killed all those English people. You know what I mean? So I actually, I thought that was really, really effective. Yeah. I, th I thought it was very, very well done. As I said in the non-spoiler, like everything was done in a very measured way. And I guess the place you always start with is your script. And I think that perhaps he spent a lot of time fine tuning this script to be done just right. So that when he finally went to shooting it, I don't know, I don't know like where he was spending his time. Like, but, yeah. but the story I thought was tight, you know? It, yeah, it, was, it no, was simple, but it was tight and it wasn't boring either. There was no fat. Yeah. It was just like, okay, so it's a story about two guys and their friendship. Yeah. And then them finally realizing that they're both on the same team and then they help each other out and then it's very inspiring and they go on and, you know, inspire a revolution. I, w I want to talk about the specific acting with the, I mean, specific actors and their acting in this movie. Yes. So uh, NTR Jr. and Ram Charan, I feel like we can talk about them together. Uh, I thought they did a fantastic yeah. job. NTR Jr. embodied that guy who, I mean, I don't know what he's actually like. This is my first time properly watching him, mm -hmm. but he really felt like a man of the woods. He really felt like a man that like came from this tribe or whatever you want to call yeah. it and was raised like that. And like we, the, our first proper scene with him is like, running away from a, 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 tiger. a tiger no a 
it was wolf. A, it, a wolf and then a and then it? a tiger. Exactly. Yes. It amped up in that whole scene of him like keeping the yeah. tiger at bay and all that stuff. I thought that was cool. Like it was again, it was over the top. I mean, there's no way your strength is going to compare to a tiger. <laughs> he just like lifted up a 400, 600 pound tiger. Yeah. No problem. Like because it fell on him and he was yeah, just holding it like, there. I'm oh. like, yeah, that's like a. <laughs> that tiger was huge. Yeah. That's almost like half a car falling on you. I'm sorry, like... You <laughs> he know. was that strong, okay? Yeah, exactly. I mean, that, well, that was the point, was yeah. to show you his, his, his strength, just yeah. strength, which I thought was effective, you know? Yeah, because like, that's his character, right? Because he's the guy with the brute strength, and Rama is the guy with the... I mean, he has a lot of strength. He, you know, they showed his boxing montage, right. but also he's the guy who's incredibly skilled. He's educated in a lot of ways. Yeah. Very I mean, much so. both in terms of his combat and in terms of his like language and all that. Yeah. His understanding of women. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was cute. <laughs> but in terms of what Ram Charan was supposed to be, I, I was convinced of him in that role as yeah. well. Like he's this guy who has, who is extremely determined, who is extremely strong, very smart and strategic. He's, he's also supposed to be a charismatic individual. And I think that he embodied all that stuff very well. Yeah, he really did. And and for the first like intro scene for him, yeah. I was honestly just kind of confused because I was a bit like, he's not that nice at all. Right, Like he's an asshole. He's an asshole. Yeah. He just went out and like beat up all those people. It just, was so epic. Yeah, like yeah. he epically beat all of them up. And also I was just like, dude, you're going to get destroyed. There's yeah. so many people. Yeah. And then he just does. I mean, he, he gets hurt, but he's still OK. And he, he completes the mission and all that. I was I, like, God, I, you're, you're not very nice at all. But I realized that, that that was his yeah. arc, right? Like he's going to come around. So Well, like I completely forgot to talk about that. At the end of that scene, he goes to the bucket that's meant for the fire and he washes his face off. Yeah. Then he stands in line again and salutes or whatever. He does his thing and he's like ready again. Yeah. And he's at his post once again. I'm like, this is so awesome. <laughs> like, I thought that was cool. Well, yeah, he no, went right back to work. Yeah, because and like you said, that that's exactly the guy that he is. And I did want to mention one other thing that I really liked about Junior NTR and how he played Beam is that there's just something about him that while he has that like brute strength that you completely buy especially because of his build like Ram Charan is is more slender build yeah. and then Junior NTR is just stacked you know he's a yeah. big guy there's just something about his face as well and and his essence and which, innocence to him. the innocence yeah. yeah which I think was very important for this character because they they said you know these these people are very simple and they're very innocent like they yeah. just want to keep their their tribe they just want to keep their people with them and they'll do anything to get to get one of their own back and like I completely bought that yeah. whatever he was selling with that character that innocence and that strength I was like I bought it. Yeah. Yeah. I thought they did a fantastic they job. They did really good. I mean, and, and I bought into their bromance. Oh, yeah. So 100%. much so, so much so, I thought it was turning into a romance. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, no, I thought they did a really, really good job of building that friendship in the story that I bought it. And I yeah. bought the loss that they were feeling over that friendship. Yeah, with the betrayal. Exactly. Yeah. Like, that was the upside of keeping the story simple was I was able to just buy into this friendship that they were developing over the course of the film. Yeah, you it was know? really cute. Like the beginning, the first half of the movie was like the really fun, happy, entertaining, like really cute songs and cute yeah. situations like Rama helping Beam out with flirting with the girl and like the the really fun dance number at the party yeah. when they get there like we'll talk about the dancing in a that bit. was really really fun yeah. and then and then the second half of the movie is like the more serious stuff you know yeah betrayal. i remember in the in our live stream earlier today they were saying that the second half was not as good but i actually liked, I liked it the second half. i thought it i thought yeah. it all made sense yeah you know? i enjoyed the whole thing yeah but definitely the first half was like the so, party half alia bot as sita you know, I, I felt like she was slightly out of place in this movie. And it's the first time I've ever felt that about Ali Abbott. Normally, I love what she does. Yeah. Normally, I'm super into her performance. And not that she did anything wrong, but it just felt like this probably should have gone to someone else. Yeah. Or they needed to do something which is frowned upon now. Because, the, you know, the last, the last time I saw it was with Rithik in Super 30. But they needed to make her darker or something like that. So she fits yeah. in better with this tribe that she belongs because like she stuck out like a sore thumb i'm not saying that there aren't light-skinned people born out of these groups but like she was the only one it felt a little bit odd 
that you had all these people who were of darker t complexion and she was just like light as me. <laughs> or you, you yeah, know? Yeah, no, I, I kind of felt the same. Like like you said, I, I there wasn't anything wrong with her performance. She gave a solid performance, but there was just something about it or just something about she didn't, her where she, she I was like... She didn't feel like she was cut from the same yeah, cloth. Yeah, I was just yeah. like, no, I don't, I don't fully by you as this character i would have loved i would have loved to have seen even just like unknown an name. unknown yeah. but like really great actress and like give her the opportunity see, okay so you never saw Uta punjab i mean because in Uta punjab they colored her and they made her she looked like she was someone from the streets in that movie like yeah. you would think that's these are two completely different people and i was like if they were fine with doing that for Uta punjab why couldn't they just kind of do something similar here. Maybe, Maybe that's just like not cool that's anymore. That's not cool anymore. Okay. You know, it's a different time now. We don't do that. All right. Well, they just did Super 30 like a couple years ago, but fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, in any case, I wouldn't have cast her for this film then. I would have cast someone else who has more of that dusky appearance that is also a good actress, whether they are known or unknown. Like, what's her name who does all the Netflix movies? Oh, uh, yeah, Samantha. S Samantha? No, not Samantha. Oh, no, you're talking about Radhika Apte. Radhika Apte. Yeah, like her. You know, there's plenty of, I'm sure there's plenty of dark-skinned Indian women that could have done that role. But in any, in any case, whether she was dark-skinned or light-skinned, Alia Bhatt was like, just sort of stuck out to me as like, oh, this is probably my least favorite of her performances. Yeah, and, and character-wise, for a while, like after her introduction, I was kind of like, eh, could have just not had her. And that's fine. You know? She just felt like a damsel in distress. Yeah, a little bit. But then, yeah. but then when they had the scene where she helped out Beam and his ragtag band of friends and and, yeah. and people, I was like, okay, you're all right. Like I can see why you she was your literally. Spot here. She was literally a plot device. Yeah. <laughs> so she didn't really. I mean, it was kind of cool because she used this smallpox thing, you know, yeah, to get the it, English people out. It showed that she was she smart was clever, and yeah. brave and, and, you know, had ingenuity. I just wish that I fell in love with their relationship like I fell in love with the friendship. It wasn't important. You know, the important thing was the bromance. The important thing was the, the, the best friend story. But then they wanted to be like, oh, by the way, yeah. also to give him more of a reason to fulfill his promise to the village, He's also betrothed to his childhood sweetheart. Did they actually show him get back together with her before the end credits? I don't remember seeing a scene of them reuniting. Yeah, they did. Um, he, he walked out of the car, like Beam brought him back. He walked out of the car and then like, I don't even she remember ran that. to like, him that's how and little... she took his hand and was like, oh. I don't remember that at all. No. Like, that's how little that relationship meant. I don't, yep. I, I, like, what you're saying is not even registering in my brain as wow. like a sort okay. of memory. Like, I completely don't, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even remember that at all. Yeah, no, because um, we just didn't care about her. Yeah. Um. So, Ajay Devgan, what he brought to that role was awesome, even though he was dubbed because we watched the Telugu version. Uh huh. I was kind of like, okay, it's fine, it's dubbed, it's dubbed. But like his his physical his physicality was still there. <sighs> he was so and good. I completely bought him as this dude who was leading this this tribe or this this group of people in, in an effort to make them more equipped to deal with the English. Yeah. You know, I I think that he just has a certain presence about him. He feels like a leader. Yeah. Like anytime, absolutely. He, anytime you watch him, yeah. he feels like that guy. So it's like if you're gonna drop any you know, star who's been in Bollywood for a while into this role. I think Ajay Devgan is a perfect pick because he feels like that dude. Yeah, absolutely. 100% he feels like that rebel leader. And, you know, the the guy who is willing to do whatever it takes, even, you know, giving up his own life. Yeah. And also, like, making his son take out the English. You know, he... His son proved himself by showing that he could shoot a bullseye from like really far away I have as a kid, about that. right? <laughs> and then and then all of a sudden, you know, he's lost his fingers, he can't shoot anymore and he's like, "All right, son. You know, what is it? Uh, do, do the aim shoot, aim something whatever. Load, aim, shoot. Load, aim, shoot. Yeah. Yeah. I just wish instead of saying shoot they said fire. Yeah. Yeah. Like in my mind I was always like, "Fire!" And yeah. then it was like shoot. And I was like, "Oh, it was just kind of hilarious to me that like the first time his his son fires this gun, I mean, it's like a cartoon, it's like an anime, but the very first time he shoots the gun, he hits a bullseye from way across the field yeah. and no one heard the gun go off. How convenient. But <laughs> Yeah, I was like, like, wait, how did you okay, not know that your, fine. your rifle was discharged? Fine. Yeah. No one heard it. Fine. They were, they were in their dead sleep. Okay, 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 fine. 
But there's no goddamn way he's gonna know how to calculate for wind and everything <laughs> in the very first time he shoots. Superhero. There, it never <laughs> came up. Because he was aiming straight at it. I think in real life, if I'm not mistaken, you actually kind of have to aim up in a way based on the wind because bullets go in an arc. They don't yeah. go straight. Yeah, because even with all that training that that he had given the villagers, they don't uh, shot a gun. Yeah, before. they would. They wouldn't know how to really shoot a real gun with bullets. It's completely different. Yeah, yeah. but I guess it's a movie. It's fine. It's, it's a, a movie. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, so Olivia Morris as Jenny. You know, while her role, I felt like was a little bit um, just thrown out the window by the end of the movie. I know. Movie. It was like, what happened to Jenny? Yeah, like she was just. <laughs> It was it, so cute for a minute, and then it was like, "Bye, Jenny." Her, the actress did a very good job. I liked her. Yeah, yeah. because I you she know did well. we've seen a lot of bad white actresses and actors. Well, white, just white talent in Indian films, right? I do have to say that the the white talent in this movie, we'll get pretty into good. That. We'll get into that. Pretty good. We'll, we'll get into that. I, I liked <laughs> I liked Olivia Morris. I thought she was really good as Jenny. 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 Although I do have one gripe, and it's not with her as an actress, but it was just with her character because in that scene where Beam was getting whipped to death, all she did was like, oh no. and it's like. Wait, where was where is this person who was like so feisty earlier on in the movie and being all well, like, what could she stop? Do? What could no, she? No, I do? don't know. She could have been like, what, no. What could she do, Achara? Like, I just literally wanted everybody. More emotion from I know, her. but literally like, every goddamn white person in the village saw what Beam did. There's no way she's gonna be. Able, there's nothing she could have done. Honestly, okay. I mean, maybe, maybe I'm asking. Maybe too much. she should have gotten more emotional. She I'll was. Gra- emotional. I will grant you that. She probably could have gotten a little bit more worked up and tried to come up with something, but like, but no. I, just, like, I think I just kind of wanted to see her clutching her chest and being all like, oh, oh. Ray Is Stevenson as Scott, I thought was, uh, he had a very like intimidating presence about him. Yeah. Um, I just, I don't know if I loved his acting, but I definitely liked him in like, in terms of his physicality. He definitely leaned into the villain role. Yeah. Pretty hard. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, who knows what what was what direction was given to him? Yeah, exactly. Because I looked at his uh, his IMDb, his yeah. resume is impressive. He's a reputable actor. He's worked in a lot of like Hollywood and British productions. Mm-hmm. I thought he was a villain. Like, he was a decent. Really, he, he was a decent. Villain. He was okay. Yeah, like, I definitely bought him as I. You know, you loved to hate him. Yeah, for sure. You know? You're like, ugh, you're so evil. I think that if I'm to fault the movie for anything, he's a very Two dimensional villain. Yeah. Like there was really no depth to him at all. Because when you, when you think of like uh, so what's the name? What's the, um, oh, Sardaru Dam. In that one, like you hate the villain, but you're given like a three dimensionality to him. Like you you get to know him more. Yeah, you're like okay, I understand. Yeah. Why you did that? But also, dude, that's messed up. Yeah, you still you still get to hate him in the movie, but yeah. there's more depth to him, right? Yeah. There was no depth to this villain here. It was like evil. The movie's three hours long already, and it's trying so to get in all fine. these songs, it's and fine. stuff. It's fine. It's fine. It's but fine. the Brits are evil, yeah, except Brits are for evil. Jenny, who's nice. We exactly. like Jenny. Except yeah. for the white bros. And and the, and the ladies at the party, they were fine. Um, Edward Sonnenblick, uh, I thought, did a great job as Edward. I thought he did a really great performance. And I'm not just saying that because we know him. Yeah. But, like, he actually did a pretty solid performance. And he, he was he was more of a supporting role in this film. And I completely bought him as that sort of... Subservient. Uh, subservient, yeah. you know, gopher kind of guy. Like, he's supposed to be just taking orders from this person. He's just... He's kind of like... Um, you remember uh, in Mulan, the the person who was like watching over the camp. Oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Who, <laughs> with the long with the mustache. <laughs> yeah, with the long mustache. <laughs> who basically was kind of like a girl. Not to say Edward Sonnenblick was anything like that, but that's no. like sort of the position, right? Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. Just taking orders from the top down. Yeah, kind of like a secretary or something. Exactly. Yeah. I thought he was great as that dude. Yeah, he was. I, I I bought him. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and so then we have uh, Allison Duty as Lady Scott, who. I loathed. I just couldn't stand <laughs> and not, her. And not just because you were supposed to loathe her no, character. No, I just couldn't stand her. It's yeah. just so over the top. Where's the blood? I know. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like okay. even, that, even that, you know, shitty British accent was better than hers. You know? Like, I thought she was American. Turns out she's Irish. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, Irish people don't. Because sometimes, sometimes her, her English accent, I was like, oh, you did well this scene. Yeah, but even when her, but, when her English, it was a trade between either like, Mediocre acting, or terrible acting in a good accent. <laughs> Those are the. S- I mean, she definitely uh, props to her for leaning into playing a very, very awful character. Like she, you, know, you thought Scott was evil, and then she's the one in the whipping scene. He's all like, 
I have this better whip. And she throws like this cat of nine tails down to him. And I'm thinking. She had one good scene. Lady. Yeah, I know. What are you guys doing in the bedroom? Right, right, right. She had one good scene. Crazy. Her, her, her good, her best scene was the opening scene, I thought, when she took the girl away. Oh yeah, she the, was the, so evil. The way that that was handled, I thought was her best work in the movie. Yeah, like it's, it just she just doesn't care about you as a like you're not a person to her. Well, yeah, like, and I, I think just, that's kind of showing what the attitude was of the Brits towards yeah, the Indians. That's whoever that woman was in the beginning was lost in the rest of the movie for me, and, and was traded for this over the top villain. Yeah. That's where I was disappointed in her. And maybe that's not her fault. Maybe not. Maybe, yeah. you know, that was maybe just lost just... in translation or yeah. something, you know. Uh, and so I don't want to put it all on her. Because, um, like, this is a thing that we see a lot with white actors in Indian films. Like, we and, don't know. Or even just, like, in the, in Squid Games. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. When you see white actors in foreign films, like, you just never know what you're going to get. Yeah. It's like a box of chocolates. So uh, in her case, like the only good scene for her, for me, was the was the opening scene. Because like, I thought that was very well handled on her part. Yeah. Because she felt awful. Like a, like that was an awful person. That yeah. Was, you know. Like terrible. So, like you, what sort of woman are you to steal yeah. another woman's child? To what you were saying. When, About. When Rama is whipping the shit out of Beam and she goes, here, try this one. And she just has this. I'm like. Where did you get that from? <laughs> yeah. What, Why did you have why that? Why did you bring that? Why? Why didn't you just give it to him like beforehand? But like you crazy you hoe. You just keep this like <laughs> like like Hillary Clinton keeps hot sauce in her purse. Like <laughs> you just have that. You just keep that like like a tampon. Like it's yeah. just there. Excuse me. Let me just pull this out of my purse. Yeah. Like who are you? Crazy hoe. Yeah. So uh, Edward Edward Buhak as Jake. Do you know who Jake is? No. Who's Jake? Jake is the guy who was the bully at the dance scene. Who was like you oh, can't do this. You oh, this I don't flamingo. Me, I, can tango. I can flamingo and <laughs> flamingo, I know, not flamingo. I know how to flamingo and parrot <laughs> parakeets. Yeah, that guy. I just wanted to call him out as a you know he was good as the bully. Like I bought him. Fun. I bought yeah. him as that arrogant, like thinks he's the best kind of dude. Yeah, yeah. Asshole. Like yeah. I, I thought he was good as that guy. Like he was, <laughs> and he actually had some good dance moves. Yeah, yeah. And then like the the dance off. The only thing that disappointed me about him was not his fault, which is he never comes back. He's just there for that scene. Right. I needed a scene later on where he gets to fight um, uh, Beam. He's like, oh, I'm going to get you now, you Indian scum. And then Beam cuts his head off. <laughs> <laughs> or something like that, you know? I wanted a scene where it just like comes back. Because he just, oh, you took Jenny from me. You right, know, right. I, I wanted something like Pocahontas, you know? Okay. Did you see Pocahontas? Yeah. Po the cartoon, the, the Disney cartoon. cartoon. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember it. Again, the English. <laughs> no, no, I mean, I remember that, but what, what, who who did John Smith cut? So John Smith taught, oh, what was it exactly? I, John Smith had taught this young guy to shoot with both eyes open. Uh -huh. And John Smith was fighting the guy who was initially betrothed to Pocahontas. Okay, yes, this is ringing bells. Yeah. And then, um, and then the young guy shoots Pocahontas's what would be husband. Ex-fiance, yeah. Yeah, and he hated John Smith because John Smith stole Pocahontas. Yeah, yeah. See? Okay. Yeah. All right, okay. Moving on. It's not really relevant. I, I, I don't know oh why my, I made why, that. Why did you Look, make that like comparison? it's like one in the morning now, okay? I'm making <laughs> weird connections. Like, my odd brain got gets even odder at this hour. <laughs> All I'm trying to say is we needed a scene where he came back and he had a fight scene with Beam. That would have been great. This What this movie lacked... That's for the extended edition. What this movie <laughs> lacked was really epic finales. Like, we needed an epic finale where in the throes of everything, like, you you see uh, Jake just come out with, like, something, like his gun or something. <laughs> Fans? And Beam Beam fights him. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like we, I just wanted something like that because they had to dance off. You set it up, you know, and then just have another but thing. But like he, uh, Beam won the dance off. That was. I the, know, but Jake's finale. got a grudge. And then like later on, you have that scene where he's trying to rescue Malala. Uh, <laughs> what's her name? Molly. Mil Molly. Yeah. You know, Beam is trying to rescue Molly. Yeah. That's a perfect scene to bring Jake back. And he's like, not today. Not today. You know? Yeah. Then, nope, today's the day. <laughs> I don't know. So okay. He could have said something, like, heartful to him, like, you know, no Indians and no dogs allowed. And then Beam goes, ka -chow, head off. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know? Okay. So, right. Something. Yeah, you, yeah. You, know, you get what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, He, he said something racist, and then Beam makes him pay for it. We haven't talked about the music in this version of our review. 
I don't think that we need to. It's been 47 <laughs> minutes as of this recording. We talked about the music and the non-spoiler. Yeah, we loved the music, we loved the in music. case you guys didn't okay. remember. The but editing. Yeah. Um, I had mentioned the ramping a little bit uh -huh. in the non-spoiler. So they kept it to a minimum and I appreciated that. I think that the editing was damn near perfect in this movie because everything was, it, that is what helped with the pacing, with yeah. the storytelling, with how the music is shown to us, the, the dance sequences, all of that. The editing was uncompromisingly good in this movie. Well, considering that um, for a lot of the scenes, there were many different shots. Yeah. They didn't like cut it together or crazy like well your your biggest critique of kgf was that it was just kind of it was almost like the editors were on cocaine or something and they were like blah, 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 let's, yeah. let's cut a whole bunch whereas if they here, weren't on cocaine they wanted me to feel like i was on cocaine <laughs> yeah. right and so here they were kind of like well we we did it we, you know we shot a bunch of coverage a bunch of different shots of this scene oh, here, i have it i have it okay how, which of these angles would you like to use? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's the that's yeah. the temptation, but they didn't do that. They here. didn't do that. You yeah, know? they were very measured, like you said. Yeah, it just kind of told the story really well. Exactly. It was all about telling the best story possible. Yeah. That's what I liked about the editing. I just want to applaud that with between SS Rajamouli and the editor. Like kudos to them because there is it's always easy to fall into that temptation of just let's just chop this thing to yeah, hell. Yeah. Like, let's, let's show it all. Show yeah, it all. Exactly. Because I mean, yeah. you know he got a lot of shots. Yeah. I mean, we saw the behind the scenes that was that was fed to us as trailers. Like it was epic. There was a lot of shots. Yeah, yeah. And very many. Like it was very measured in its in its execution. I, I really applaud that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the dance numbers. Okay, we could finally talk about that. Oh, um, so good. It, 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 it got me as riveted as <laughs> as Lord of the Dance. Uh, what's his name? Michael Flatley, oh, Lord the, of the Dance. The what was it? The Nachi or the Nat? Well. When we watched the music video, it was called Nacho Nacho, but then when we watched the Telugu version, it was called something else. Whatever. The 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 dance off song. The dance off was great. Yeah, so good. Super it was, fun. I mean, it was built up great because you know you have that scene when Rama comes in with after the the pan or whatever the the the, the tray the tray goes flying, mm -hmm. and he walks up and you know in any other circumstance that will just happen. Without an explanation, really, without without being able to justify it, but he's a soldier, so it's justified why he's able to command that kind of respect and just walk up and is like, "All right," and then they get the black guys on his side. The black guy gets it. Yeah, I <laughs> love the that. drums. I, I love that they had like a random black guy drummer in, yeah. in the band, and that when when Jake was being a real douchebag, he was yeah. kind of like, "Oh." You know, yeah. like, oh, I'm I, with I, you. The, 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 right from the get-go with the drums, I was like, oh, I'm feeling that. Yeah. And then you saw uh, uh, Beam, who's like a child for all intents and purposes in this scene. Yeah. He just gets excited. He's like, okay, I know what's up. And then they get into the dance and then like, they end up like scooping up all the white broads. <laughs> <laughs> all the ladies are like, yes, yep. this is fun. Let's do this. But what I really appreciated about this scene was that uh, Jake and his posse didn't give up. Yeah, they joined in. They joined in. And, and they uh, sucked. Well, no. I no. thought they I thought Jake, they put up a good fight. They did put up a good fight, yeah. but then they just didn't have the stamina. You no, know, they like didn't. when you when you go from doing the foxtrot or whatever the hell they were doing earlier on, which the was the flamingo. Like, it was not the flamingo, okay? It was like something like it wasn't even a waltz. I think it was like a foxtrot or something like that. The salsa. It wasn't a salsa. Well, he was showing he was showing Beam all those different dance moves that he could do. Yeah, he didn't do salsa. And did. did you notice the part where he put his foot in his face? Very yeah, disrespectful. Very disrespectful. But um, yeah, anyway, yeah. I, I thought that was all very well. Like that whole thing was great yeah. from start to finish. In and terms it told of, a story. It, yes, it did. Like in terms of like the waltzing to, you know, Jake going in there and showboating yeah. and to, to Rama coming in and like with the drums. Saving the day. And then it yeah. becoming this face off thing. And then all the girls going, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was great. And then it was really cute when, when Rama let him have it so that he could impress That Jenny. never came back up. I was hoping that was gonna come back up. Like that would have been a great ribbing thing to have at the credits or something like that. I, you know, I let you win, yeah, right? Yeah, I let you win. No, you didn't. No, Let's no. do it again. <laughs> face off. And then at the, end, at the very end, they can do another face off. A dance off, And then they go off, yeah. kick each other in the crotch and it freezes like Rocky III. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, anyway, 
Uh, oh, but, but that, uh, talking about music, I just want to also just shout out the last music video. And we saw that, I did a reaction to that as well. But I was also just so surprised that we got to see SS Rajamuli in the video at the end as well. He's like, it's my movie, bitch. I know. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. I was so excited yeah. when he popped up in the theater. I was like, yes, he should get the recognition. He worked so hard on this movie and it's like, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. So much fun. Anyway, final thoughts. Go ahead. Um, well, I guess you guys know that I really enjoyed this film. It was mm. supremely entertaining. I think SS Rajamouli knows how to make an entertaining film. Yeah. He really does. And he really, really delivered on this front. I had a fantastic time and um, I, I would love to watch it again. All too often you'll get films whether it's from, it doesn't matter where it's from, you'll get films that are spectacle focused and that's it and there's no substance to it, like Transformers or something like that, right? Um, this had spectacle and it had substance. It had just enough substance to make the whole journey worthwhile. There right. was emotion in there. It had a lot of what I would want from a movie. It's not without its flaws. Yeah. It's definitely course. got some shortcomings. Yeah, yeah. But I think that in order to deal with those shortcomings, it would have to have been another hour long. And so I'm like, I'm fine. <laughs> I, th this I is thought long it was already. <laughs> yeah, it was a fun movie. It, it did a really good job of merging, I guess the easiest way to put it is merging history with fantasy. Yes. In a way that was highly entertaining and highly moving. Yes. So I enjoyed it. Um, hopefully you guys did too. Let us know your feelings in the comments below. Thanks if you're still here. Say hashtag enjoyed the long review. So there you go. I'm Jabby Kawai. This is Achara Kirk. Peace out.